Hey everybody, how's it going? I ran across some footage from 2013 of me working on some uh, sculptures, making some molds and casting. So I took this and re-edited it and added some music and stuff. I hope you enjoy. So this is the finished sculpture and uh, I carved in some details into it while I uh, use the blow dryer on it like this to blow dry the surface because it's just water based clay. You know it's like pottery clay. The same clay you use like when you make pottery but this is called wed clay which stands for Walter Elias Disney. It's a clay they use at Disneyland. They developed it. It doesn't crack as quick and it's it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, more flexible and stuff. And then what I do after I get the surface dry, I've already sprayed on one coat and then I just uh, spray and build up some coats of this uh, clear acrylic plastic basically. Clear spray paint I guess. And uh, after I do a few coats of that, you know, I take that and then blow dry it. Seal the surface. And you can't wait too long because if you wait too long, it will start cracking because it's wet underneath. And then after this, what I'll do is uh, I'll put like a, uh, like an oil over it. You know, like a, like a mold release type oil. And then I'll start building up layers of uh, building up layers of latex rubber. You can make silicone molds, polyurethane molds, or what I do is just build up layers of latex rubber and make a mold, and then I'll make a shell mold, and then I'll cast it in polyurethane resin, so it'll be hard. So that's that's how it goes, and I'll, I'll do the rest of the process too. I'll show you the whole process. Here I am applying the first coat of latex rubber and I put it on super super thin so I can capture all the, the detail of the sculpture. And uh, you can use a blow dryer and blow dryer th these layers or you can um, when you start putting on the thicker layers you can um, just put it in front of a fan. And the pig has got several coats. You can see he's starting to fill in his mouth and the lettering and stuff. So he's probably about 10 coats. Then what I'll do is I'll take this fan and put the fan on it and blow dry the coats. Now you want to make sure there aren't any undercuts, like here there's a little undercut, you can put some clay in there, some oil-based clay or water-based clay, but it should be fine, should be okay, because it's not too much of an undercut. So what I'm going to do is I need to make a mother mold for this, so I'm going to show you how I do that, pretty simple. Okay, before you mix up your plaster, you want to get some of these blue rubber gloves, which work great, and then get a... Get some good old petroleum jelly, and you dip your fingers in this suck, and you kind of swish it all around like that. And then you go down here, 
And then you just smush this all over it. And you get your Vaseline or your generic petroleum jelly. You get a little more. Where's it go? Oh, oh, here it is. You just put it all over it, put it on the wood too. Make sure it's all over it. And that'll be your mold release. For when you put the plaster on it, it'll pop off. It'll come right off of it. Okay, this is the bucket I use to make the plaster in. This is the leftover stuff, and what I do is just kind of crunch it or hit it, and all the all the dry plaster comes out. You don't want to be throwing this wet plaster down the drain. Like I even have a bucket you can wash your hands in too. I'll show you. Yeah, here's the bucket I, I use to wash my hands in, and I wash the um, the mixer thing. Well, they mix the plaster up with in there too to wash it off. But you don't want you don't want a plaster going down the drain at all. It's not it's bad news. So when I'm mixing up the plaster, what I do is I start with uh, with uh, with hot water. The reason I use hot water or warm water is it sets faster because I'm just making a shell mold. It's no big deal. I'm not making a casting with intricate details. I just need a support for the uh, the rubber mold. So I start with warm water and then it sets faster and that's fine. And uh, if you use cold water it takes longer to set and if you use lukewarm water it just takes a medium amount of time to set. So yeah what I do is I start with um, <clears throat> I just put in the uh, I, put, I start putting in amounts of uh, plaster, I sprinkle it in, and when it looks like a, a riverbed, kind of, you know, with cracked marks, like a dried up riverbed, you know you're done. And then I take the drill with a, I have a special uh, attachment that stirs it up, like a paint stirrer. And then I just stir it up and pour it on the mold, and uh, just... move it around and... Sometimes I have to do two coats. I'll do one and then I'll do another. So this may just be one coat and then I'll do the other coat later. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to kind of guesstimate how much water I want and how much plaster I'm going to use. Got the water. I got my bag of plaster down here, and I just start sprinkling it in. sitting under the fan all night. The plaster should be done enough so I can pry it off the, the rubber mold and the uh, original art. There we 
we go. So there's the rubber mold. There's the shell mold, or the, or that's the shell mold or mother mold, if you want to call it that. And then this here is the latex rubber mold. Take off of the original. So here's the original art, which I will recycle. Sometimes I, sometimes I take these and just redo them too. I'll put that over here. Here's the mother mold. Here's the rubber latex mold. And then it fits right in here. And then the next thing we'll do is cast that. Put in some polyurethane resin. here is the, uh, the casting, the sculpture, it's poured pretty thick, it's reinforced with fiberglass and stuff, and then I got to clean up all these edges. So I'm going to get started doing that. So what I'm using here is just a small wood rasp, but it works pretty good to clean up the edges, it gets all the polyurethane resin and the fiberglass off. Okay, this is the finished casting. It's all cleaned up. And uh, in my next video, I will be painting it and staining it and then putting the speaker in and attaching it to the car. Well, here's the finished piece. I stained it and uh, it's ready to go. Well, here's the finished uh, gargoyle speaker cover that I designed. It's lightweight and durable. And now I'm going to uh, put it over the speaker.
Awesome. Awesomeness. Speaker in the back, I just mount this on top of the car and it's waterproof. And then it's, it's got the, the wires that hook up here and it has a cover that'll go over it. And this is that uh, treated lumber for outside in the weather. And, uh, and then I got the screen in there so it's can't see the speaker quite as much so people can't stab it with their hypodermic needles. Do you know actually somebody stabbed one of my sculptures with their hypodermic needle? One of these street people? They're cuckoo! <laughs> Not cuckoo like me! I'm a good kind of cuckoo. <laughs> anyway, there it is. So, I was going to make a video showing me putting it on top of the car, but it's getting late. It's about 5, so you get the idea. This is going on top of the van.